But there is no denying New Jersey has lost a lot of pharma jobs in recent years. So many that the Christie administration has now allocated $2.6 million to retrain former pharmaceutical workers. Joining us now from the State House, the Assistant Commissioner in the Department of Labor and Workforce Development, Mary Ellen Clark. Commissioner, it's good of you to join us. Uh, how is this money intended to be spent? Well, this is uh, about a, an allocation of about $5,000 a person for each individual who's been affected by downsizing or layoffs in the pharmaceutical industry to get them to be either retrained, learn a new skill, or think about alternative careers. How do you find them or do they find you or is it a combination of the both? Well, we appreciate your uh, putting us on the air, and um, we have uh, information at all our one-stop career centers. We also have information on www.jobsforjersey.com, um, and we are trying to get the word out by, by having networking events. We had several at Rutgers University and at some of the community colleges, and really trying to go uh, where the individuals are. When we talk about retraining, are we talking about for retraining within the pharmaceutical industry in, in areas perhaps where these people were not working before or retrain them for other lines of work? Well, both, both are uh, really viable alternatives. As you probably know, our pharmaceutical workforce is very highly educated, very highly skilled. But there still are some areas, uh, such as in regulatory affairs, where there are gaps. So if people have the background and just need some brush up in skills, we can provide that, as well as there are other areas, such as medical devices and diagnostics, um, biotechnology firms in New Jersey who are really hungry for the wonderful skills that the pharmaceutical workers have. On the other hand, many of these people you mentioned, they're highly educated, they're highly experienced, which means they're also not the youngest people in the workforce. And, and for those, who say, over 40 or over 50 especially, these have been particularly difficult times. So what, what can you do with these folks? Well, actually, it's, it's very interesting that... Um, for folks who are over 45 in New Jersey really have the lower unemployment rates. It's actually people under 30 who have the highest unemployment rates and also individuals who do not have a high school diploma have the highest unemployment rates. So I think some, it's, it's somewhat of a myth, but um, the, the older you are, you have a great deal of wisdom and experience to share. So we're finding that individuals can get good jobs um, even even though they may be my age. <laughs> is this, uh, 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 welcome to the club. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, though, it's got to be a very challenging situation, especially in a time when we do have all of this consolidation in pharma in New Jersey. And, and you have, uh, we were just talking in the segment before, about Merck's dec decision to move from Reddington to its uh, location in Summit instead. They say there's no job loss that's going to be uh, resulting from that move, but it still shows that these are, these are companies in flux, are they not? Well, as, as we both have been talking about, there's been a lot of contraction and mergers. And I think what's emerging out of that are, are sort of different alternatives for individuals. So there are smaller startup companies who need good talent. And uh, we found also some scientists who've been laid off have actually uh, found partners and are going into business themselves. So there's, there's still a lot of work to be done. I think it's just a changeover from where there were, you know, uh, several monolithic companies. Now there are a lot of smaller startups and a lot of partnering among the various actors in, in the field. And before you were in government, you, this is a field you know very well. You worked in it, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> and when you, look, so I, when you take a look at what it, what it is now and what it was then, what goes through your mind? Well, I, I think it's, it's dynamic and it's changing. And I think that, uh, as I said, it's just a different model. So there are many more companies in the supply chain, if you will, rather than everyone working in one company. So I think people should not be disheartened. There are, there's uh, contracting work, consulting work to be done, um, you know, short-term contracts, longer term, working with startups. So there are a number of alternatives. People just have to think a little bit differently than they maybe had done before. Mary Ellen Clark, have to leave it there. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, thank you.